Team preview presented by Hellman's lifetime male partner of this guy right here, Will Levis. <laughs> Lemenes. When he was with Kentucky, he went viral after saying he occasionally puts the condiment in his coffee juice. He said, quote, I've been known to put mayonnaise in my coffee sometimes. And then you get sponsorship. Now, his stock did fall during the draft, and he's had to wait a while. But all of a sudden, after a great game against Atlanta, it's all happening there, and for Will Levis, he was fantastic. Third player in NFL history with four more passing touchdowns in his NFL debut. Again, here are the highlights. First off, also wearing the sweet throwbacks, yeah, right? Those things are clean. Four passing touchdowns in last week's five-point win over the Falcons. The Titans had three total passing touchdowns in weeks one through seven. So the question is, what type of encore are we going to get here? Danny, you are our quarterback here. What are you expecting out of the Rook tonight? I am not expecting another four passing <laughs> touchdowns. I'll just say that. Like, there yeah. usually is, uh, you know, a rookie who hasn't played very much. You'll see some struggles. You see some ups and downs. And for Will Levis, I think it's great for him. What a moment. You saw him hugging his family after the game. Our Amanda was there. Amanda Garrett was there on the sideline. Got to interview him. It was a great moment. You have to, now you have to go do it again like that's the expectations if you're going to be a franchise quarterback that's what the titans organization brought you in there to do and i do think he will have that kind of come back to reality moment tonight on the road in pittsburgh tough atmosphere tough defense veteran coach who you know has played against a lot of rookie quarterbacks that haven't had that much success but i'll be curious to see because as much as i, I did not think will levis should have been a top five pick i was pretty critical against him in the in the draft coming out yeah. i still think he was a good talented quarterback i just thought the value you kind of was getting a little bit too rich. I think the Titans got a great draft pick in him. They like, did. get him in that first pick of the second round. So maybe they do find out, but now's the time he has the chance to prove every critic wrong and make the most of this opportunity. Well, DK, the benefit for Will Levis is it's a short week, and you know this on a Sunday to Thursday, it's not a lot of turnaround. You don't really get to put a game plan in specifically for a quarterback you're playing. So that's the benefit that Will Levis will have. Another benefit, one of the best safeties in all of football won't be playing. Mika Fitzpatrick, he is the Steelers eraser. You usually need to know where he's at. You won't have to worry about him being on the field. I really love what I saw last week from Will Levis. Danny, the thing about young quarterbacks is they tend to leave the pocket too early. Will Levis doesn't do that. He's not afraid of pressure. I mean, if you go back to his last year at Kentucky, sacked 36 times. So you know this guy is a tough guy. In 11 games, he was sacked 36 times, played through injuries at Kentucky. But if you look at the year before with Liam Cohen, he looked really good in a NFL-type offense. I love that he stared down the pressure, was able to go through his reads, and he didn't evade the pocket when he didn't need to. We talked about DeAndre Hopkins being a number one receiver. When we are a young quarterback, you lean on your best player, and that's exactly what he did. He he didn't, you know, live outside of himself. He lived within the offense. Heavy play action, which they'll do tonight because they're going to run the ball with Derrick Henry, and he was able to find DeAndre Hopkins. I look for him to do more of the same. Now, I agree with you. He won't have four passing touchdowns, <laughs> but I think he has a pretty good game tonight. Okay. Will Levis and the Titans, by the way, will look to buck a trend, guys. The Tennessee Titans are 0-4 on the road or in London this year, 3-0 at home. So got it done against Atlanta, now facing a road test there against the Steelers and that fan base. Matt Canada is going to have Kenny Pickett dealing with ribs here in that situation. Danny, there was a lot talked about in the offseason, much hype about how this offense was going to look. It hasn't been pretty, yet they found some ways to win. What are you anticipating <laughs> for Kenny Pickett and company? Uh, it's been, and you mentioned Matt Canada. He's been under an intense amount of scrutiny uh, this season. I think they got to get back to kind of running the football, being more physical. Nigel Harris has had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons, is well below a pace to get even close to that. And you've seen Kenny Pickett. I think they put too much pressure on the expectation was he's going to be our franchise put up some nice numbers as a rookie but then I think he got a little bit too caught up in oh we're just going to turn him into Ben Roethlisberger's throwing for 5,000 yards a season and it's put him in some vulnerable positions they also have had some drops you know starting games they have come out of the gate their first half numbers are horrendous they uh, they sputter out of the first half and then they find themselves trying to come back or you know playing at a tight game when they when they drop passes they don't sustain drives they don't get things going the best way to do that especially with the banged up Kenny Pickett is to give him a run game but it's not going to be easy versus this Titans defense which is pretty stout against the run
Well, DK, people have been talking about Matt Kennedy, and you alluded to it, that he hasn't done a really good job. And as players, there's certain times in a game where we don't agree with what the play caller is calling. But at the end of the day, when there's plays to be made, you have to make it. Look at this first play right here. First play of the game, Deontay Johnson down the seam, wide open, drop pass. That's in the bread basket. Is that on Matt Kennedy? No, that's on the players not making the plays. If you're Deontay Johnson, you're starting off the game. That's You're getting all the momentum if you make that catch. Look at this next play, third and 15. Now, this would have been called back because because of holding, but look at Kenny Pickett avoiding the pressure, going to his right. Another dime into Deontay Johnson's hands. He drops the pass. Now, again, okay, that's not Matt Canada. That's on the players. Look at Deontay Johnson right here. Danny, receivers uh -huh. kill me when they do this. Get north and south and get the first down. This is a microcosm of the Steelers offense. Second down, Jalen Warren gets stopped. Now it's third and two. Look here, George Pickens on his corner route. Kenny Pickett misses him. He has a DBB by three yards. Just lay it out there in front of him. Now, is that on Matt Canada? Or is that on the players? Again, as players, we don't always agree with what the coordinator is calling. But when there's plays to be made, you have to make it. And, Danny, you brought up the run game. Najee Harris does not seem like he's very explosive this year. When Jalen Warren gets in the game, he always averages like four and a half uh, yards per carry or more. I would be interested to see, will they start going more 50-50 with the carries? Because it feels like when Warren comes into the game, they get a little bit more explosive. Since the start of last season, only Zach Wilson has a worse passer rating Oof. than Kenny Pickett. So we showed some of the highlight right there, by the way, and some of that was on Pickett yeah. there. Uh, X-Factors, Jens. Lee J, I'll start with you. Who you got? The big dog in Tennessee, Jeffrey Simmons. I mean, last week, DK, versus Kent, Chris Lindstrom, who was one of the best guards in all of football, he made him say uncle, literally, during that game. This is one of the most dominant defensive tackles in all of football. You talk about those ribs uh, yeah. <laughs> with Kenny Pickett? Yep. Well, Jeffrey Simmons will get after you. see it right here. He beats Lindstrom with his hands with the swipe move, then sack fumble. Game-changing plays by Jeffrey Simmons. This is what he's going to do tonight versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. All day, creating havoc in the backfield. As we look at this next play, watch him go speed to power and condense his pocket. Ritter has nowhere to go. Gibbons, the blitzing linebacker, picks up an easy sack because Ritter has nowhere to escape because Jeffrey Simmons condenses the pocket. Understanding pass rush lanes, doing your job. Right here, low front, we have a TE game. Tanks. You get Jeffrey Simmons off the field. Look at Nico Autry. Then they share half a sack. Neither one of those guys got blocked. Jeffrey Simmons is dominant. Could have showed you 10 more run plays where he dominated in the run game. He is going to be big for the Tennessee Titans, affecting not only Kenny Pickett, but the rest of that offense tonight. I like it. Uh, it makes me worried about my X factor because I went with <laughs> Najee Harris. We talked about him before. You mentioned Jalen Warren, the pressure that Najee's starting to feel sure. because he's not carrying the workload. This, to me, has got to be a game. National spotlight. You're at home. Your quarterback is playing with banged up ribs you have to take some of that pressure off and get some big plays or else if you don't you'll find yourself sitting on the bench the other place I think Najee can hurt you too is in the pass game like he can get out if you don't have the ball down the field hit your check downs you keep your second down third down more manageable situations like you see him here so I love Najee Harris I think he has a big bounce back game tonight if he doesn't watch out for Jalen Warren <laughs> So those X-Factors, your guys are on opposite ends, and you happen to be on opposite ends of the spread in this one, which is two and a half or three, but we're going to call it two and a half on FanDuel with All a right. low <laughs> total. You're going to, oh, now, now, now I know where you're going. I, like I know why you like it, though, because you're going with Pittsburgh if you like the two and a half or the three. I'm going with the Steelers. I do think this is a get-right game for them. I also, again, you've seen this happen many times before with a young quarterback. You come out, everybody gets real excited, and then you have that back-to-reality moment we talked about. I'm very curious to see how Levis does tonight. We were talking about the props before the game. Game. If there's an over interception prop, I might take that. He also, in back at Kentucky, was a little bit loose. He likes to stretch the field, likes to take some chances. I think he get burned on that tonight, but I'll go with the Steelers and lay the two and a half. Yeah, DK, I'm on the opposite end, and I'm a little nervous. Tommy, like you said, it was minus three, now it's two in the hook. But if you look at what the Titans have done against the spread in primetime games, six and two since 2021, Mike Vrabel knows how to get his team ready on short weeks and in primetime games. They have struggled on the road, right? They're 0 and 4 when they talk. We talk about playing on the road and playing in London. So they have struggled in that in that aspect. The one thing that does concern me for the Tennessee Titans, Andre Diller will be starting that tackle. Now they benched him. He was their high prize free agent acquisition. Didn't play well. Chris Hubbard has his concussion. TJ Watt is coming off the edge. So that does concern me. But I do like the Tennessee Titans in this spot, and I like the under in this too. I believe the Tennessee Titans in games this year, five and two the under is hit. The Steelers six and one the under is hit. But I like the Titans. I like Lil Will Levis in that run game to get it done. Don't like Ben against Tomlin <laughs> two games in a row at home, 
But I think the tit Tennessee Titans cover at least. I'm not saying they win, but I believe they cover tonight. I'm going to have to change my X factor to TJ Watt. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Mike, and Mike what a 36 and a half total, which we've seen a bunch now lately in the NFL. Lige, Danny, certainly appreciate it. So we get Thursday night football. We get a Germany game, of course, with the Dolphins and the Chiefs. And then NFL on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus has you covered Sunday starting at 1 Eastern. And that does include Seattle at Baltimore, where the teams are combined 11 and 4.